shell. That was Ash's idea. The thing is, but, I don't really have a choice. I'm in a survival situation. You I'm have hands! You, survive. you, you have, have hands! hands. Just okay. cool that I have hold been that to carry excess luggage. You're really exactly. gonna voluntarily carry around this... This is so undiogenine of you. Yes. And, and here's the other thing. What this tortoise is also providing me with is meat. That's the also, most how part. big is the tortoise? Because yeah, if it's like a important question, how big is this tortoise? <laughs> Guys, can we just move on from the question? I made a reference you to a movie. Then, you brought up a them. question. We have to address. You called it. us robots for having reasonable responses to a non sensitive yes. question. This is retribution. <laughs> plus, <laughs> plus, you just sprung this question upon us, so we had no context for it. Hey, three of you that have never seen the thing that I'm referencing. What would you do uh, in this situation that makes no movie. sense? I'm re I referenced Blade Runner. It's not like I pulled an, ab uh, an obscure quote out of Closer to God or something. What the hell is that? It's an obscure yeah, movie. That? that proves my point. I haven't seen Blade Runner. <laughs> it proves nothing. <laughs> anyway. Hello, Internet. We are now recording for episode 131 of Enter the Dungeon. Chris, how would you give the recap of what happened last time? Uh, from what I can remember, let's see. We finished the, our stuff at the temple, the not the, the monastery, not temple. And we are on our way. We have a map of where the place of to the portal, whatever the gem thing is. So we left and we are on our way over there. Yes. Um... <laughs> Let's see. Uh, we met. First saw an e a griffin or an eagle. It was an eagle. Yes. And we had then communicated it with our not very good player. So now we turned him into an NPC and possibly I think he's now in a portal somewhere, some place. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> and then we continued on. Uh, then we met the people from Disneyland. Uh, Nick, Jonas, and... and oh, what? <laughs> I forget what the other brother's name is. Okay, Nick, Jack, Joe, something. and... Nash. Nick, Joe, and... Somebody Nash. else. Nash? No. Okay, he was named... Nick Jonas, okay. Joe Jonas, and... Okay, do you remember the pickle from Spongebob? No. Still no pickles. Oh my gosh, I hate that scene. Nope, not that. Not that. That's the only pickle I'm familiar with. That's what, I'm, that's okay. what I was thinking. A comedian with the last name of Hart. Kevin? Yes. Kevin, no Jonas. Kevin the Pickle? Yes. No, he's the sea cucumber or whatever. Either way, um, so I, we met them, and I think we were gonna go to Disneyland at some point in the future. I don't know. We, but canonically, we have discovered there's a place named Disneyland. I believe. And uh, after that, I think we left. I think the child stole something from them without us knowing and through my very vague cover uh and review i think that's it yeah, that i probably good. thoroughly confused everyone in the session as well as our viewers don't worry we don't have any of those <laughs> yeah. you know when i adapt this into a book one day sh should i keep all the recaps you just should. like every uh, chapter there's just some guy giving a weird no, at, at, last the begin chapter. at the beginning of the chapter put a yes. recap yes or if you no, really want just... or or if you really want to write a book that's yes. a tldr version of the story no, which no, no, is no. just here's, recaps here's what you do yes you, the the epigraphs at the start of every chapter Yes. Are where you put the recap in the ah. previous chapter. Yeah, rather than put lore bits or prophecy, you put that there. Okay. Exactly. Okay. See? Now you're getting it. Now you're thinking of portals. 
Okay, and speaking of portals, actually, no. There, there no yet. one's gotten sucked into a portal yet, so. But you guys are heading it anyways. And speaking of, um, Ezioho, finally, you, you come out of that uh, weird, trippy state that you've been walking in for the past four days. Mm. And probably a good time for you to become self-aware again, because you guys just walked into the bear room. What? I, what? You know, the bear room. The, the room with the bears. You know, okay. You know how That's every- not helpful. Just say, yes, the bear room. That doesn't help me. That doesn't give me any more information. Uh, hey, yay, yay. Yeah, so to clarify, yeah, and this room looked like it was some sort of, like, gaming room at one point. There's, like, a, there's four tables in this room with um, old cards and dice on top of them. Okay. Uh, okay. And, and, oh, right, and the last thing that happened was that Earth Mover tripped over one of them. Oh. What is the light level in the room? Uh, the light level is dark. And none of you packed a torch. We, I, we are dark in darkness. Dark, superior dark vision. So how, how, how big is the room? And actually, it's, the room oh, is about, um, it's about 40 by 30 feet. Mm, good. So my dark vision is kind of useless. I mean, I, I I can see in the dark, which is good. How but... good is my raven's dark vision? Uh, the raven's dark vision, I believe it's out to 30, but you can check. What do I have to check? Because it's your character. Because you guys... you're the one that asked this. Uh, you should know this already. I yeah, don't. Don't you guys just know what your characters can do? Mostly, like Andreas. Like, how does alchemy work? Um, Raven attributes will inconsistently willpower. Wait a sec. My uh, Raven can't make any sounds, correct? Because it's a spectral Raven. Uh, that is correct. Your Raven has not made. Uh, it rarely makes sound. Okay, because I'm hearing, I'm looking here at the attributes of a normal raven. It says it's a tiny beast, and it has mimicry, which is uh, the raven can make sim, uh, mimic simple sounds that can be heard. That it has heard. Okay. Like a person whispering, a baby crying, or an animal chittering. That's very yes. good. Anyways, that doesn't tell me anything about my dark vision, so tough luck for me. <laughs> And let's see. Now. Anyways, but uh, anyways, Raven fly. That's how. Okay. Well, first. That's how. Uh huh. Yep. So Fitch and Gordon made it to the door, and I guess um, Ash, go ahead and roll me a stealth check real quick. Oh, I should be with dice. Let me find my. D- uh, give me a moment. I get for nothing from here. Hmm. In that case, maybe you should have disadvantage on the roll. <laughs> hardy, hardy, hard. I brought, I brought one set of dice with me for D&D. My other okay. dice are on their way. I mean, it's not like a disadvantage has ever killed anyone. Sure it has. Do you actually want me to roll a disadvantage? No, no, you're good. Okay. And it's, you said it's a stealth check? Yes. 15. Okay, yeah, with a 15, um, you're able to make it past the bears. What? The bears. Okay, so, then. That's good to know. In that case, you are right here. Earth Mover is, like, right here on... Oh, you actually fell on top of a bear, so you're currently prone. I fell on top of a bear? <laughs> No, Earth Mover did. Oh. oh. And I'm going to need also, everyone to Why do those chairs look like Furbies? Because they're terrifying and they just woke up unexpectedly. 
Terrifying or terrified? Furbies are terrifying, so let's get some initiative rolls. Because Andreas woke up the bears again. Ah, oh, come on, Andreas. Well, okay. if I'm going to roll poorly, at least it's on the initiative. <sighs> yeah, that's that's a that's a three total. Okay. Oh, shame on you! It's it's, it's it's based off decks, right? Yes. 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 Yeah, that's so that's a three total. I got a twenty-one. Makes sense. And Earthmover? I'm trying to remember. I'm pulling up my... Everything's in the wrong space. Move time to workspace. Actually, no, not that one. This one. All of the time. Dinkus, Donkus, Doinkus. Uh, it's, either, it's either an 18 or a 19. If you need to know between those two, I can... I'm, I'll, I will finish finding it in a second. Yeah. I'll just, that's fine. It's not close enough for that to make a difference. Okay. In that case, uh, Stitch is going to go first. You yeah. just to clarify it. This is currently a dark room, but you have eagle vision, or sorry, raven vision, so you can see. And you just heard Earth Mover fall to the ground, waking up a bear, and that's startling the other three bears, causing them to wake up as well. What? It's not, that's not going to be like a turn later or something. Well, they're starting to wake up. They're still kind of drowsy, so. All right. Uh, well, I think we should all focus on one bear at a time. So I'm going to go to the one that. Or, uh, Earth Mover woke up and start beating it to death. Because what else are we gonna do? All right, not beat it to death, you know. That's an option. <laughs> Bitch, are you sure? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sure you anyways, win? that's a one. I like this first roll. That's not any better. That's a three. <laughs> Okay, yeah, three's a mess. I mean, that's technically better. It's not a one. Where is your halfling left now? Wait a minute. What's your attack modifier again? Uh, plus eight. <laughs> a three. If you rolled a three, then that's not a mess. It's not a mess at they're three. Better. They're not wearing armor. Three plus eight. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> Wait. So if I rolled a two, it wouldn't hit. Who's the side? Uh, technically, yes, it would have. Because meets beats. What? No way! I have a 1 in 20 chance of missing. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna... Roll for damage. That hit the cable. That's a 2 plus 4. Hold on, is it 2 plus 4? Yes, it should be 2 plus 4. All right. Do I dare to attack the birds? Right. My date doesn't like me today. I got a two on my second attack. Okay. Two plus uh, does that miss? It well, beat, it... Yeah, two plus, plus eight. eight. That's a miss. So how much damage? Ten. Uh, wait, what? How much damage? On that oh, first hit. Oh, it was, I said uh, two plus four, no? Oh, okay. Yeah, Roll two two damage. Okay. In that case, yeah, that's a solid hit on the bear. Like, you you don't think it's gonna make contact, but then you boop him right in the snoop, and it's it's not fun for the bear. Of course not. So, that was a very good introduction, I guess. <laughs> you also have a bonus action if you want. But we entered the dungeon, right? Yes. Already? Yes. Sure, why not? Okay. What's an 11 plus 8? Okay. 19. That is. I hope it would. And that's a 5 damage. I forget, do I add the mod uh, the yes. modifier? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's 9 damage. Okay. One more attack. It's a beer. 19. You're not going to be able so, to kill natu natural 19, by the way. So it, I'm pretty sure it hits. 
Yep, that hits. Three bonus for seven damage. Okay. With that, um, <laughs> this bear collapses to the ground and. Okay, you're good. Yay! But that is your turn. Yes, it is. Let's move her. Your turn. Andreas? I... The other ones are still awaking, yes? Yes, they are awaking. Or awakening or something. Awakening, yes. Uh... Awakening, you say? Mm -hmm. well, we're trying to go... Like, through... Through the door in the bottom or entrance, I should say. Um, you guys were aiming for the door up near where Gordon was, or is rather. Okay. Do I get the sense that if we leave like right now, the other bears will give chase? Um, you get the feeling that you and Fish could probably slip out pretty easily, but um, Gordon and Gogo, they're still kind of in the danger zone. And you want to get to that, and, and also to the best of your ability, the next path was through the um, door up there. But there were still other hallways you hadn't explored yet. Uh, no, I meant like the way the going the direction we still intended to go. Oh, um, do you feel like if you were to make slip through there quickly, you should be able to avoid the bears? But if there's a complication, then who knows? They're not innocents if they're animals. It's fine. It's not the same. It's not as morally troublesome. Okay. Um, on them. Do prone creatures have disadvantage on deck saves? Um. Prone. Uh, disadvantage on attack rolls? No, they do not. Okay. I'm just gonna go whack its head, I think. Okay, which one? Uh, I would say the one nearest me, but the, the one along the bottom. Okay. And you have advantage on this attack, right? Yeah, because it's prone. Wait, this is an auto crit, right? No. Okay. That's for dead creatures, or dying creatures, I should say. Well, both natural rolls were 11s, so... That hits? Plus, well, plus 6 is a, yeah, 17. That's not what I was trying to do, but I... That's not right. Oh, yeah, it's a plus one. It's a plus seven. Um, that's going to be eight bludgeoning damage. Okay, eight total. And yeah. you do have multi-attack with this weapon. And also, so you bring down your hammer with you know the magic gem onto it, smack this thing, and it's actually kind of weird. It looks like this bear has some sort of um, mushrooms growing on it. That you didn't notice until you were in position swinging over it. I see. Yeah. Um, could I make a major trick on that? Um, yes, but it would take the rest of your turn.
I'll wait until it's dead. I'll roll another attack. Okay. Thank God for advantage. Um, 21. Uh, 21 hits. And then that'll be... Um, no, 5 damage. 5 bludgeoning damage. Okay, then. Yeah, this thing does not look happy. And um, you actually you know, crush some of the mushrooms on top of it. It, yeah. Yeah, and it kind of starts to eye you. Let's see now. I'm still doing, um, um, let's see now. They probably haven't noticed Easy Hogo yet because it's a um, dark room and they aren't exactly looking in your direction. Good. Good. So, um, this one. That's what I like to hear. So now this one's going to stand up, which is going to cost it half its movement, and it's going to start to move over. Towards Fitch, or? Okay. That's that towards And it's going to try to take a swipe at you. Hope you got good armor. Okay, uh, that's going to miss because your armor is above an 8. Is your armor above 13? Yeah, you feel this bear kind of like pawing at you, but the elven chain's just holding up too well, but now you have two bears that have your attention. Or rather, you have the attention of two bears, which is not a fun position to be in, believe me. How do you know? Um... Research. Drew, now, have you been attacking bears again? No, I've been poking them. I'm not an idiot. It's not much better. Okay, and okay, that does hit, because meets beats. Almost accidentally used the statue of Blink Dog for a second. Nope. Oh my god. They're like, Wait a minute, bears can't teleport. Yeah, this thing's trying to claw at you, and well, and again, I almost just rolled a d20 for damage. I mean, okay, then. So it's swiping at you with its claws, and you take a uh, four slashing from that. Now it's going to try to bite you, but it misses. So now you have three bears right on top of you. And that is all they can do. So now it's Easy Hogo's turn. Okay. Here's what I am wondering. So I don't know how strong these bears are. Yes. But oh, also, um, this is a dark room. What is Earthmover doing to see? Is Earth Mover not able to see right now? Is that you know, I'm, I'm just gonna say that the um that the Earth Gem just gives off some very ambient light. It's not enough to make any real mechanical difference, but it was enough for you to see those uh, mushrooms a moment ago, so I don't have to wreck on that. But yeah, so what I'm hearing dark. is we don't need more light here. Well, I mean it's not can like we? he can't really see around the room. He can just barely make it. it's like a um it's almost like a phone light. Less than that. Oh. Okay. Anyway. Let's go, go. Whose turn? It's Easy Ogo's turn. My turn. I'll be right back. Here's what I'm thinking. Earth Mover can't see. 
Correct. Prison Move was also surrounded by three bears. Correct. Do you think if there was suddenly a bright light, the bears would go towards that light? What do, um, what do you guys think? If there was a fast punch, they would go towards them. Yeah, these bears are relatively aggroed, but you might be able to distract them. I mean, we're also in a dark room. Yes. Suddenly seeing a source of light, I I would be I'd be curious about that and confused, and I would investigate. Yes, so that could definitely throw them off. So cool. Conveniently enough, I have just the spell to do both those things: dancing lights, dancing lights, dancing lights. What color is that? Dancing Queen. No. Okay, want these lights? <laughs> uh, I, I'm just checking right now if I can combine them into one light. Into one vaguely glowing humanoid form of medium shape. Ah, okay. Perfect. I'm going to put it at G3. in the hopes that the bears will go towards it. And I'm hoping that, that it also has a radius of 10 feet for the light it emits. Oh. Okay. okay, yeah, so. Twice the size of that. It's at a radius of 10 feet. That's only a radius of 5. There we go. Is that okay. looking? <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. And I, I, Earth Mover should be able to see that. Yes, Earth Mover can. And be able to see at least one of the bears better. Okay. And who knows? Maybe the original bears will be distracted by that. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to go to B2 and end my turn there. Okay, then. And with that massive flash of light, it's now Sitch's turn. Finally. Yes. All right, I run up to the first bear that I contract. And so throw a nice solid can... punch at it. Yes. Nine plus eight. That hits. Uh, and it hit for six plus four damage. Okay. Throw the second Fun. punch. That's an eight plus eight, sixteen. Sixteen hits. deals four plus four damage eight okay yeah so uh that bear does not like it he's just he's just kind of hanging on very bloody he just goes Where is? sound a bear makes when it's in great pain and by the way yeah and when you're running like that and just smoothly landing those punches it reminds you of the training that um tarmic was teaching you it's like mm. you can feel him in your legs Metaphorically, I, I feel him in my legs. Yes, yeah. that's how that's how it works. That's how metaphors work. Yes, and then you look down and you realize he's actually helping you move your legs. <laughs> anyway, now it's Earth Mover's turn. Uh, not a good position. Being surrounded, surrounded by on all sides. Mm -hmm. Also, I said I said the shortest path. I would I thought I would have gone to 
D5 to do that, uh, to do those punches. Well, you jumped over the um, dead bear. Yes, okay, so then that would have put me on D6, and I would have had the choice to not enclose Mr. Earth Mover inside. <laughs> there you go. No, I... Alright, yeah, that's fine, as long as I can still punch the bear. Yep, that's, that's a range. Okay, so... Yes, and you're now... Sur- okay, so now you're not surrounded by all bears, because Fitch moves. Um... They're up now, yeah? Yes. Uh... 20 hits, right? Yeah, so 20 hits. Are you still hitting the same ones before? Yeah. Okay, then. Gotta reduce that action economy somehow. Uh, that's only gonna be 5 more bludgeoning damage. Okay, then. And you smack him for 5 damage. And yeah, this thing, it's just sort of um, staring at you with these um, deep, almost glassy eyes. And it's not going down yet, but it is bleeding profusely. It will more attack. Interesting that it's bleeding. That hits. It's a 24. Yeah, with that, you bring down your hammer, just smashing into this thing. You cause, um, you know, bones to uh, rupture, blood to spew everywhere. And. I'm going to need you to make a constitution saving throw. Spores. Okay, cool. Yep. Ooh, that's bad. That's real bad. Mm-hmm. Um, I doubt it's above a 10. It is a... Oh, no, it's an 11. Okay, yeah. With an 11 six total. Con saves. Oh, really? Oh. Okay. So, yeah, with an 11 total... Um, it's not as bad as it could have been, but you still breathe in quite a few spores. Okay. And you realize this, it might have problems in a little while. Cool. Yeah. Okay, then. And now, seeing you, um, you know, just slay their bear-like comrade, they were going to go after you. Okay, and well, that's gonna miss. Okay, yeah, bear you know, number one tries swiping at you with its claws and then biting at you, but you know just can't quite make it through that open chain. And bear number um, two, he's kind of distracted by the light. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna wander off a bit. Over in this direction, just to enjoy the light. And he's kind of uh, poking at it a little bit. Okay, now it's easy. I'll go turn. Okay. Okay, one of them did go towards the light. Yes. Okay. Um, I am going to... Yeah. Uh, I'm going to use Eldritch Blast on the bear in my five. Okay. Hiding so behind... Hiding behind... Huh? You don't want to use Blight? What if I need it for... For a bigger threat later, it's just. Bear. Surely you should bust out all of your best spells on the first encounter of the dungeon, where some random bears crawl in. It's just a bear. I think I can kill it with Eldritch Blast. Okay. And I it's think I need my spells for later. So yes, I'm just using Eldritch Blast. Can we just I, say this thing dies? Like, I, I got a nap. Okay. With the nap, we can we just say this we thing can, dies. We can, we can say that it dies, but then it just all of a sudden just keeps moving. <laughs> no. Yeah, in that case, you just pierce through this guy with you know just an eldritch like laser beam, just 
smash into him with fewer force damage, which caused, you know, some of his, um, you know, outers to become innards. Yeah, and it's like, the, the thing is, like, not only does it go right through, um, uh, Do you bear, mean his inner it, 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 also just, it also just flies no. right past, um, uh, Earth Mover's ear. Yeah, yeah, burns just straight just through him. Yeah, just narrowly missing Earth Mover. Unless Earth Mover yeah, wants like, to take the brunt of the damage. Yeah. Uh, like, that... it, 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 it comes so close to, uh, to his ear that he actually starts bleeding a little bit. Yeah. But, like, not, not, not enough to cause damage, but it's more like he got a nick. Okay. Yeah, Andreas. Unless do you want um, Earth? Uh, do you want um, Ash to roll damage, and then you take that damage, less whatever killed the bear? Are we? Is it the... okay if he cleaves through the bear to get to you? <laughs> Why am I being cleft into at all? Because he got a natural. Because I rolled a nat twenty to kill the bear with Eldritch Blast. Okay. So we're so. No, just give this me the option. Joke. Is that something that uh, that you want? No. Okay then. Okay then we won't do it. In that case, by the, you know, it's, by it's the gods, turn. Deus Ex Machina. This doesn't kill him. Now it's the just turn. I run at the other bear and start beating him up. All right. I Make roll an eighteen. That hits. I was about to ask you if you would have advantage. Seven. Seventeen on the next hit. One plus four is five. Okay. Yes, that, that, that is how counting works. You want to burn key to just annihilate this thing? True. Why did you even bring it up? Because if you burn key, you could probably kill this bear this turn. Let me check how many key points I have. I should be at. You full. start out with something like seven or eight, I think, yes. at this level. It's based on my level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're we're also level eight, right? Yes. There, no, level right. nine. I will burn oh, level nine. Point. Yes. Oh. All right. My level nine. Yes, I am level nine. Okay. What? Nat twenty. Nice. All right, let's Come count on. the damage. D six plus four. Again, I, do we need to count the damage, or can we just say this bear just got vaporized, Come on. essentially? It's like beat into a pulpy mess. Five plus four plus four. So five plus four plus four. Eight plus five is thirteen. Double that damage. No, it's two D four plus. It's two D six plus four. So thirteen damage. Yeah. In that case, yeah, you just you just keep beating on this bear. You smash him apart. You boop his snoop so hard that it like breaks. I, I don't boop his I don't boop his animal. snoop anymore. I make a snoop, a new yeah. snoot. Yeah, it actually has a snood now. You know, like like a turkey. This poor majestic animal that was just admiring the beautiful <laughs> light that Easy Oho had given him. He was about to convert to Easy Hogoism. Boy, I was about to have my own religion. Yeah, very what? Right. Very very right. Right. Should have stopped. Like, here's me. the thing: have stopped this me. bear was actually an accountant. He had a wife and kids. Oh, let's go find his wife and kids then. He 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 attends like a social we meeting just, every Tuesday, and he brings the donuts. Who do you think we fought? We fought the wife and kids. <laughs> have, have none this of you was. ever watched Harley Quinn? You gotta end the bloodline. Actually, this you know what? Maybe you, did this, maybe you did this poor bear a mercy because he didn't have to see what you did to his family. <laughs> he was blinded by the light that we killed his family. Uh, anyway, yeah, you guys are able to, um, you kill the bear successfully. Right. Congratulations. It's family side, right? Bear puzzle. Yeah. Hey, that makes this a family show, right? What? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And anyway, now you guys have cleaned up the ba uh, done away with the bears. What do you want to do now? I don't know. This wouldn't be family side. Uh, loot the bears. Um, they should have some gold, right? Well, if you well, there um, the bears don't, but there are uh, there are things on the table. 
Sure. Where do I find? Yeah, so if you're looking over the table, like I said before, you definitely see, um, you know, um, several sets of cards and dice, and you realize that... Um, Um, let's see now. You find a, you, by looking around the table, you're eventually able to put together one full set of um, cards and then uh, four dice, four six sided dice. So you might want to write that down. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna make a py uh, py Python program to automatically keep track of my uh, inventory. Isn't that more called the Word document? Yeah, isn't that more complicated than just keeping track of your inventory? No. Okay. Anyway, what do you want to do now? What is the table worth? But it's a table. I don't know. It's yeah. got to be worth something. Do you want to bring a table with you? It's worth one silver piece. <laughs> money is money, right? I don't know. I mean, well, you don't have the carpenter with you right now, so he can't appraise it. Ooh, I okay. So I how, start how looting the bears. bears. Yeah, how big are these bears? Bear meat might be good. Uh, they're the size of black bears. Just thinking that. No, 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 no. Let's. Okay. Here's another idea that we could do. Yes. Do either of you have any skin or a, a, any skill I with skin. skinning animals? Oh, you're skinning animals. Yes. Um, I feel like that would probably be survival based because it's hunting related. I have a plus one. In survival. Yeah, that probably would be. I'm not proficient in it. Mm. Yeah, I do right. have I do have mason tools. That doesn't no, help. Okay. Um, no, that's not gonna work. Okay. Yeah. What kind of relevant tools and skills do you guys have between the three of you? I have a plus six for survival. Okay. Oh, that okay. would do it. That would do it. Yeah, I have a silver knife. All right. Mm. Um. What's that? Yeah, you know what? There bears. There are a lot of there are bears in uh, Kuren, So Earthmover has probably done this before, right? I mean, I mean, the na 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 nature I... could also be a good one to use. Um, I have a plus seven to that. Oh, okay, yeah. So even better. So yeah, I okay. mean, survival yeah. will be for skinning. Nature is more for like identification of things or like finding rivers. Um, yeah, in that case, yeah, it definitely be survival and do any of uh, and um. Do either of you want to help him? Uh, the, the, I, I should say the difference between nature and survival is uh, nature is intelligence, survival is wisdom. Yeah. Sure, I'll help. Okay, um, how are you helping? Hold the bits uh, I want you to hold in place so that it's easier to get the skin taut. That I can do. Yeah, but is, is, is there anything that you can do practically to help are um oh, pra practically to help um freeing up my hands for a lot of tasks is a lot of help yeah but okay yeah i'm just I'm, I'm just looking to see if i have anything else i could do oh yeah, oh, mostly because, oh, like, oh oh yeah because like if you guys want to get like you know a full bear pelt that's going to be pretty difficult that's going to be a high dc to beat But if you just want, like, you know, some bare fur or meat, that'd be um, a lot more doable. Can I use my masonry skills to skin a bear? <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> Actually, okay, so not exactly, but I'm going to... But you, maybe you like you use your, like, uh, understanding of tools and knife work to help um, guide Earthmover. Yes. Oh, yes. wait wait a minute. This, this isn't going to help us now, mm -hmm. but... If the meat turns rotten, I have purified food and drink. Okay. <laughs> Good. I can make it edible again later. Um, it doesn't help us now, but anything else? It, will, it could help us later. 
Okay. Um. Well, I do have. I wish the chef kid was here, dude. Yes. Wait, is his NPC is is his uh player character here? Um. Depends. What do you need him for? To skin the bears. I mean, I I feel like he'd know. He'd be pretty yeah. effective at like. Okay. You know, I'm gonna say that. Yeah, he can come over and use his impressive games. strength to help you hold the bears. He won't skin him himself. I mean, Earth Mover. Has <laughs> he is a chef. Time. Okay. Yeah, this is survival based. So, I mean, here, here's the other thing: it, it, if we fail with one bear, we've got three others that we can learn from. Yeah, that's fine then. Yeah, in that case, yeah, since you've got a, um, since you have two orderlies helping you, Andreas, go ahead and make a survival check with advantage. Sweet. And if this uh, goes terribly wrong, we've got three more chances to get it right. One short of perfect. That's a 25. Okay, yeah. 14 so... and a 19 on the two dice. Oh, and while, while this is going on, I'm also going to have the uh, light, the light source move closer, so it's easier to see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so a problem that's just going to be intrinsic to these bears is that just the way they died wasn't necessarily very clean for pelting, so... The one I killed didn't? Wait. Yeah, beating a bear to death isn't going to be very conducive to having a uh, good They're looking... pretty tough animals. I'm pretty sure they you're, you're telling me that using a bolt of pure me of pure force actually, to clean you know, you're right. a bear isn't going to be clean? Actually, no, you're right. You're right. This is the one you killed. So, yeah, I take that back. Yeah. This is our best chance. Okay, yeah. So Which is why we should save it for last. We should save this oh. one for last so we can preserve the pelt You're like, and learn from the other three instead. You already said it. So with a 25 total, though, you know, it's actually a um, it's actually a pretty good job. You're, it's it's um, slightly better than you thought it was going to be. I mean, it's not like a perfect carpet job or anything, but you're able to uh, detach, you know, this bear's outer, um, you know, fur and skin from the rest of it. Uh, definitely some uh, nangled uh, bits here and there, but yeah, you're able to eventually pull off the uh, bear pelt. Nice. It's mostly in one I helped! Yay! Yay! And so now you guys <laughs> have <laughs> a bear pelt <laughs> that if you don't treat will rot. Da 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 da! Cool. Um, if, if, if we don't treat it, it's going to rot. Yes. That's how pelts work. Would you possibly would you possibly classify this as food? No, it's skin. And they have a really low nutritional value regardless. Um, I have soap, I have water. Does this count as food? Okay, you, yes, do yeah. any of you have salt? I don't need salt. Uh, I'm gonna need uh I'm going to be cracking open its skull here in a bit and getting its brains. Okay. I I feel like if anyone is going to have salt, it would be our chef. Also, currently maybe done. there is... Also, if you guys just keep looking throughout the dungeon, you might be able to find salt somewhere, so... It's not real okay. And, Andres, if you're going to extract the brain, I feel like that would be like a medicine check. Oh, no, I don't want the brain as the brain. Like, it doesn't need to be at all intact. In fact, yeah. I'd prefer it not be. Oh, yeah, in that case, yeah, <laughs> you can just crack open the brain, scoop out. <laughs> like actually, egg. on, on crack second open one, the I don't want to crack idea. it open because I actually, I don't have a nice container right now. Like, I don't have a bottle. I mean, a not a bottle. I don't, I, don't have, like, I don't have, like, a, a bucket. Yeah, just, and just I know I need, like, a bucket. Into the bag. I know I need a bucket. What, what, um, did you, wait, what do you want the brain for, then? As curing material. Ah, wait, really? Huh. Yeah. To, to reanimate the dead, obviously. Yeah, that, yeah I guess that makes sense. Yeah, so um, I have I have soap, which I presume is like made from fat. Um, I have water. I have whatever the synovial spinal, like uh, the the, the cerebrospinal fluid. Okay. Um, and do any of yeah. the three of you have a bucket? Yeah, if anyone has a bucket, it's gonna make my life yeah. a lot easier. I have a water skin. Yeah, I know. Um, so actually, rather than. Ooh, okay. The tops of bear skulls are really, really hard. Okay. Um, if you think so? so, what I think I'm, oh, yeah, you can shoot them with a with a small caliber bullet, and it won't 
go into their head. Okay. They're like really strong skulls. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to alchemically scalp the skull. Mm-hmm. Since it's a clean carcass oh. otherwise. So yes. I'm, I'm going to basically like chop the top off of the skull so that it still forms a basin in which I can work a little bit. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Um, in that case, I guess that and, would be... I'm not yeah. necessarily going to make you roll for this, but I guess um, how much alchemical stamina would that be? Like, what would, um, this, it would be uh, living... It, it, yeah, it's, it's, manil- it's manipulate element organic. So yeah, in that like, case... It's yeah. two or three. I think it's three. Um, yeah, I'm also I'm also going to be taking the the scalp and attaching it to my hammer as like the front face of the cross pane. Uh, oh my goodness! Because it's nice dense bone. In that case, um, yeah, if you're attaching it like that, in that case, yeah, just make a quick um, alchemy check. But this will be a low DC, and this will represent both things. Ooh, how low is low? I've got myself a twelve. Yeah, yeah, I was just thinking, like, be the 10 and you're fine, so... Okay, yeah. Uh, also, um, easy, okay, so, easy Ho, you're keeping the light up, by the way. I, I assume, so, okay, so anyway, so now you've got a, um, so now you've got a relatively good bucket. I mean, it's actually, yeah, fairly large. I was about to say, it's not that big, and I'm like, no, bears are pretty big. Got big heads. Um, yeah. So I mash up the brain. I'm using soap as well as a some form of binding agent in some way. Okay. Wait, uh, would Earth Mover realistically know how to do this? Does he have training in like preserving pelts? I mean, and um, skins, hides, anything like that. I lived in the mountains and it was survival of the fittest, so I imagine any useful trade such as, like, clothier stuff would be, like, common knowledge. Um, I just wonder if this would be any type of tool proficiency. Um... I mean, I'm, I'm essentially going to be setting it up in preparation to tan, right? I mean, really, I, I wouldn't actually. I need to make a frame first. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got rope, so yeah. Let me. Is there wood in here anywhere? Uh, the tables are made of wood. Cool. I'm going to. I'm an alchemist. I, I don't need to worry about making things with carbon. Oh, wait, no. We have a no. That's that is stone. It's a shame you're not a carpenter. Sorry, Fitch. Yeah, Although you may be able to assist. Um, I'm, I'm going to make a tanning frame. Okay. So, I mean, it's essentially just a sturdily made rectangle of wood. It's not particularly difficult. So, a table? No, it needs to be, like, a frame. Ah, okay. It's like what you would have around the outside of a, or I guess on the inside of a canvas um, that holds the stretched uh, canvas in place. So it's, a, but, so it's a table without a tabletop. Well, it's a ring. It's a, just a ring of wood. Okay. Um, I could just send you a picture of a tanning frame like that. Tanning frame. Oh. Like is, is this something you're actively looking up as you do this right now, or is no? I just know how to do this. Okay. How do you know how to do this? What? Uh, why don't you know? Yeah. Why don't you know? It's a tanning frame. It's literally just a rectangle that's been shored up so that you could. When do you like stretch, try a boy? So you could stretch a, a, a hide on it. Oh, also, just out of curiosity, why did Gerald help out with the bear, but I stayed behind the pillar? That's a that's that a good question. Oh, um, Gordon, he came over to help hold the bear in place using his strength. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, if you want, oh, to that's, be over I, there. I thought I thought that was Daryl. Do you want to be over there? Um, you know, I'm I'm going to investigate this. I'm assuming it's a pillar that I'm next yes. to. Okay, so so this so this is going to take a while, huh? Yeah, this is this is going to be 
like probably a good 10, 20 minutes just to set up the frame and then start stringing up the, like once the, once the pelt is off. Yeah. Um, um, like once I start stringing up the, the, uh, the hide on the frame. It's a process. Yes. Um, I read everyone else coming. Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> it's a tan frame. Yeah. Um, let's see now. I guess um, since Stitch is a sailor, he can use his understanding of ropes to help you um, set this up. Mm -hmm. Well, I was also thinking being a mason, he has some understanding of structural integrity, so he may be able to help okay. in making sure the oh, frame is yeah, short up as well. Chris, you're going to make a mason uh, tool check. And what? Chris is done. Good. What? He gets to. This is his second mason tool check of the entire campaign. And, he and he's it. not even awake for it. Yeah. Wait, so is, sad. is he asleep or is he. Christopher. He's good at being asleep. I don't know if he's asleep because he's. I would have assumed he'd fall asleep on his bed and. Yeah, he's not, he's not even in the frame. Asleep. Yeah. And maybe his rabbit will play for him. Jack, yeah. Jack, make a um, make a car make a uh, masonry tool check. Bush. Did nine. Chris, I'm about to microwave a beer. Say something to stop me. Please don't. <laughs> don't Seriously, worry. I'm going to keep it in the can so that way it heats up evenly. That's even worse. Christopher. Okay, what if I were to heat up wine instead? I mean, that's... Uh, actually, w warm wine is a common thing. Okay. Uh, as is warm beer. Thank you. I'm not saying it's right necessarily because I haven't had it. Wow. I'm just saying it's a thing that exists. There's, there's a thing called mold wine. Yeah, and it's mold, you have to heat it up. So oh, also, I by the way, I I, ha I had kombucha recently. I'm sorry. It's not. I'm it's so not. Sorry oh for you. no, Andres, I already told you about this. I was just filling ash in, and I, I don't get it. It's bad. It tastes like it tastes like fruit vinegar. What are you talking about? Okay, maybe you didn't have good kombucha. I'll, I'll give you that. No kombucha is good. Yeah, yeah, no kombucha is good. Exactly. No, some kombucha is really good. Which, which kombucha was it? Do you, do you remember the brand? I just remember it was in a can from a tea bar. Oh, yeah. I've had bottled oh. kombucha from my like vegan cousin, and it's awful. Kombucha is just bad. No. Like I, I, if I'm not mistaken, the appeal of kombucha is the fact that it is not uh, an anaerobic process when you when you do the uh, the fermenting. So it has a lot of um, ethanoic acid in it. I, I, that's what gives like it the tangy flavor. It is ethanoic acid, but that just means like you're missing out on ethanol that you could have gotten from the fermentation process, and instead it's turning into vinegar. Not literally vinegar, but, you know. Yeah. So, okay. My, my personal preference for, for when it comes to kombucha is, I, I prefer the, uh, the brand GTs. If Are there sweet involved. kombuchas? Um, like adding additional sugar after the fermentation process is stopped? I mean, I, but the, the thing is, it ne uh, if... If you're getting the unfiltered kombucha or the raw and raw kombucha, it will never it will never stop fermenting. Well, yes, it will. Eventually, everything stops eventually. Well, no, because I mean, you will eventually either run out of sugar for the things to eat, or you will run out of. Um, I guess it's probably not Saccharomyces cerevisiae, but whatever little tiny beast is in there actually producing the alcohol. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I guess I guess it could add sugar, but this brand you you sh sugar is not added after the fermentation process because it still has those the little fermenting beasts in it. Okay. Yeah, it, it still has that little the little fermenty things, which is how you could take one bottle of kombucha 
and get 30, 40, 50 bottles of kombucha for three yeah. bucks. Yeah, because you just I, you, you just would, add it to fruit and then it gives you more kombucha. Not quite. No? What else is in kombucha? So why are we talking about kombucha? Because you weren't here. Because you, because you weren't here. You guys we are talking about wearing... bones and bears. Yeah, and we There's wanted you for a stones. mason check. You get to make a mason check, and you weren't I get to here make for it. it. Where was it? What? How does bones relate to masonry? What in the world? You understand structural integrity, which means when yeah, I'm making my tanning yeah. frame, you can help me shore it up and make sure it's actually going to hold. Okay. Natural, natural 16. Okay, plus proficiency and intelligence. Or should I say minus intelligence? <laughs> no, I think... Don't you actually have a minus... No, you have oh, a minus one to strength. One. Never mind. Plus one. Okay, yeah, so plus intelligence and proficiency. 21. Okay, yeah, 21. with 21, you're able to... um, Yeah, and with your understanding of rigging, you're able to show to Earth Mover, okay, uh, hold these ropes like this, and this is how we make sure it's solid, and bada-bing, bada-boom, you guys have a solid tanning bed. No, no, no. It's a bed used for tanning. It's not a bed. Fine, a it's couch. A, it's a, it's, it is not a, a, no. Why would there be a couch? It's just a frame. Um, so yeah, tanning frame, get. Well, I guess I probably have the height on it already if you've done the rigging, um, with the ropes and such. Uh, that would be the part that's important. So then I'm mashing up brain and adding soap and more water to even it out. And, uh, ooh, I need something to paint it onto the hide with. Hang on, what do I have in my inventory? What do I have that I can use for this? Um... What kind of clothes do I have? Oh, my common clothes from when I started the campaign I can use for this. And wash okay. them later. Considering I now wander around in like fancy tailored suit. Yep. Um Speaking of which, did you take that off for this? Yes. Yeah. Okay, no, good. like I I'm 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 bare chested and wearing like common pants. Yeah, that's cool. Um so I'll take the shirt from before. Like my, my original shirt. Mm -hmm. Um and I'll I'll be using that to paint it onto the uh, to the to the hide. This is probably the first time that Easy Hogo has noticed how many tattoos Earthmover has. It's it's um, a lot. Yeah, it is a lot, a lot. Also, yeah, is Easy Hogo getting any closer to this? Uh, is there anything written on this on this uh, tower thing in front of me, or no? This is a table. Oh, is there anything written on the table then? I also um, kind of thought they were pillars. <laughs> um, not, not necessarily anything written. I mean, you saw Fitch go over earlier and take the uh, cards that were on it. Wait a second. Okay. Is there anything on the walls? or? Why are there bears walls? in a room with tables? Um, yeah, if you're beginning to um, explore the area a little bit, you notice that... Um, there's it, it's mostly smooth stone uh, walls. Nothing uh, too exciting here. But if you uh, make a perception check, not twenty. But no, no. Easy hell goes the no, one. It was, it was, oh. it was aimed at perception. Oh, I thought I was the one doing it. Never mind. Uh, sixteen. There goes okay. my not twenty of the game. With a 16, uh, you're wandering around and eventually around um, the G section of the wall, you notice where um, some people, it feels like they've carved their names into the stone. Oh, people have carved their names into the stone. And these definitely look like human names. Mm. Good. Are, are they powerful human names? Are they virile human names? Are they famous lore names. I, that's, that's probably a better question. What are these names? Um, let's see now. There is... You're able to make out um, five different names. Okay. Um, 
I'm waiting with bated breath. Um, there's Gabriel Smith, Isaiah Patterson, Isaiah Taylor, Jack Anderson, and Jack James. Can you repeat those slower? I can drop it in the chat. That works too. Yeah. Oh. And above that, if you're feeling around, uh, you uh, find the words. Yeah, yeah, because you can see in the dark pretty well, so you notice above that is the word captains. Yeah. But you don't necessarily know who these um, humans were. Okay then. And um, so, what else does the Earth Mover need to do? Um, once the the tanning juice is uh, is applied to it, it just needs to be in sunlight. Okay, I mean that those dancing lights aren't going to be there forever. Um, I mean, I I can they, they every minute they go out, but at the same time, it's just a cantrip, so I can keep on resummoning them. Yeah, I guess the so you 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 essentially have unlimited light. Or the three of you can work together and drag this outside. I yeah, I figured we were going to take it outside. Oh, we we, we can take this out. There's an outside. Yes. Again, I've been a daze for the past four days, so I don't know any of this stuff. Okay, so yeah, the three of you, I guess, can take the... Yeah, between the three of you, or uh, four of you, I guess Gordon's in the room, you're able to pick up this bear on the frame and just carry him out like a female. It's just the skin. I should clarify that. Yes, the bear skin, like a very... Like a funeral procession, yeah. Do, 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 not cough and dance the bear. <laughs> and so, Wait, yeah. Can I, turn? can I kill something now? What? What? Are, are you even paying attention? About what? I'm just waiting to, to kill something. You're carrying a, no, the skin outside. We're carrying the skin outside? Yes. Well, I get that's not very killing, but sure. Okay, do, you guys are able do, to backtrack. Do, do we want to drag the? Do we want to drag the other three bears outside as well, yes! so we can yes! skin them and take them? Yeah, you got you had me at drag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it takes a little while, but eventually you guys are able to backtrack your steps um, <laughs> down the hallway to the left, down to the. Um, 25 foot by 25 foot entrance and then drag it outside where those um, eagles were hanging out. Oh, so now you're going to have the eagles eat the bears. Wow, okay. I said where they were hanging out, not are necessarily. They are unnecessarily. Are they hanging out there now? <sighs> also, Chris, Real why do you wear the eagles? Huh? Why do you turn off your video? I feel like you're going to fall asleep. I'm not going to fall asleep. Cap. Yeah. Just because That's I've done it once doesn't that. mean Three I am times. <laughs> Anyway. Just because <laughs> causation does not... Hey, uh, what's it called? You're talking about correlation does causation. not equal causation. Yes. But that's... No, no, no. It, th this is not the, the same as correlation does not imply causation. This is causation. <laughs> anyway... I'm just changing my shirt. After another 10 minutes, you guys are well, able to you, drag you, you want to have a nip slip? Four bodies outside. No, it's just a tight shirt. You guys are able to deposit the bear bodies outside. Okay. Now what? Okay. Um, we can start taking... We can, we can start getting the meat off of the bears and also getting their skin. Getting the other three skins. <laughs> After a rousing success the first time. Yes. Indeed. <laughs> this is a this is the session of skin bones. <laughs> you guys no, 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 no. An entire dungeon, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, Drew, Drew, Drew. This session, <laughs> you should name it the bare skin and bones. <laughs> 
Okay, that's very funny. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, you guys are able to drop the three bears outside, so that way I guess they don't rot away, and now you have your tanning bear. <laughs> tanning bear. Uh, tanning bear, tanning bear. Oh, bear. God, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what do hey, you know? maybe, maybe we'll come across a merchant while we while we travel to this dungeon. Who wants yes. bear skins? Oh, bear meat. You don't know. We should do this for every single monster we encounter, right? <laughs> I only do this for this one because, like, oh, that's meat that we can use. This, we can. Uh, every, and then, tell me. It was at this point, Drew. No, <laughs> is, he was is this, gonna. Is this... Is this your guys' way of getting revenge? Okay, so I mean, here, here's the other, like the thing is, bears bear meat is edible, and from what I'm saying, it's good. It's just greasy. However, I don't know about you, but it's I don't gamey. think you can really eat. I, I don't think kobolds would taste all that good. So, if you're gonna throw animals at us, might as well just slaughter them and take them for our meat, because we're not gonna get this chance all the time. Kobolds are also sapient. <laughs> that too. Like they have I'll language. I'll use kobolds and, as an example because it's the first thing that came to mind. Structure. Would you rather went with a centaur instead, so you can start eating human flesh? You know, guys, if you wanted cannibalism, you could have done that a long time ago. No, 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 not yet, not yet, not yet. That's not later. Yet. The, the that's later in the uh, in the adventure. This is the start of our descent into madness and cannibalism. I'm already on the mad part. What, am I going to go into cannibalism or something? No, that, that, it's going to be Andreas that does that. Excuse me? He, he's just going to show up one day, like, just show up to the session, gnawing on a human leg. It's fine. But see, this is the closest... Uh, episode in time to Halloween, so like, too late. <laughs> Although it would be spookier if I waited. Oh wait, it it you're right. It is Halloween. Yeah. It tomorrow is Halloween. Is Halloween. Tomorrow. Today is Halloween. All Hallows Eve. Anyway, tisk tisk, Mister Future. Now you get it. Now you're thinking with time zones. Okay. I'm not going to admit to liking that one. Oh. Why didn't you tell us about 9-11 sooner? <laughs> Why I was three when 9-11 happened. <laughs> I was three. <laughs> I was I just over lo- a month old. I love that joke. I really love that joke. <laughs> The, the why didn't they warn us? <laughs> yeah. It was also in Maine when it happened. Yeah. He could have been in Japan. Wait. You don't know. Anyway. <laughs> what do you want to do now? I mean, do we just want to keep on Skinning the bears and taking their meat? Actually, wh- where are we going to store the meat? I guess the next question. Uh, I, mean... I, ma- I imagine Gordon has salt. We can put everything on sticks, put it in a... Actually, put it in the cave where it's going to be nice and preserved from the elements. Wait, uh, so salt did, it for a while did, and then come you just want to take it. like the... I, I take it we're in, in the middle of a forest, right? You're on a... You're on... You're on a mountain. Mm-hmm. Yep. But is 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 are are there trees nearby? Not immediately nearby. Our our DM is slowly dying in the inside. <sighs> because we could just smoke the meat. And oh my it. gosh! <laughs> All right. What I'm gonna in the meantime while he's doing that, I'm gonna explore a little bit inside. Okay. I mean, we would need to finish butchering the the, the bears, but yes, we could. 
like we need to not have organs in there anymore. Oh, true. Yeah. Okay. But the, the thing is, like, given enough time, we could just butcher all these all these animals down and just start smoking them. Hey, you know where there might be resources to help with that? <laughs> in the dungeon? Yes. Crazy how that works. <laughs> I feel like now I suggested this, you're, it's not going to happen, so I'm just going to savor this while I can. Do I need to retcon this dungeon into being a salt mine? <laughs> a salt mine? <laughs> I mean, you could also just retcon the next room into I being mean, a salt mine. I mean, then again, if we found a salt mine, I, we could just start making a business out of it. We could. <laughs> <laughs> we could. We, we, we just clear it out, and then it's like, yeah, we, it's a salt mine. We will hire people to work the salt mine. <laughs> You're, you're, what we're slowly just... doing is forcing you to buy Acquisitions Incorporated. That's all this is. <laughs> we're, we're just slowly over time going to continue like starting okay. business ventures until you need to buy Acquisitions Incorporated. I mean, why, so you why have in a the world package for this? Why in the world do you think we want it? Like, look, you you're the one who introduced Disney to it, so I'm like business. Time to become capitalists, boys. <laughs> this, is this is what Middletown was for. Who, poor K. No Mas. Por que no los dos? Por que no los dos? How about, how about you guys do the dungeon todos. and then you make a business related to the dungeon? Why not do it at the same time? <laughs> All right, but, for, but first we're going to take these these animals are going to smoke them. Is this going to be how this dungeon goes? One room at a time and the entire session dedicated to milking its resources? Yes. <laughs> no. I can take what? the table and fashion a, a tanning frame and I can so, take it and process no, I, this. I'm really going to need to prepare the books for the library session then. Oh god. Oh boy. We're going to scour through yeah. every single one of those books and then make a <laughs> library and donate them. <laughs> <laughs> Drew's wait, not wait, ready wait, for the fact that I will start taking notes for the purpose for of milking the resources of this library. Andreas, the man become... who refuses to take notes even in preparation for the games that he runs, will buy a notebook for that library. And then, all of a sudden, we become PhDs in the world <laughs> just by reading an entire library. World Studies scholar here. Earth I mean, at, at this point, I could be a history major. I, I could be a history professor. That's just because you lived through it. That's not the same. Exactly. You don't remember it. But you don't remember it. <laughs> not yet, anyways. I could become a mathematician. Well, either that, or I'll just say I... I'll just start making stuff up, and no one will know the difference. No one will know the difference. Nobody will be the wiser. <laughs> it's called lying. You know, these bears, they were just supposed to be like a fun little warm-up. Like, see if I could get you guys to spend some resources. Maybe take just a little bit of damage. Just like, hey, let's get back into the idea of battle and dungeon crawl. But nope, I guess not. <laughs> resources. <laughs> yep. Everything's a commodity. <laughs> this Everything, is the purpose of D and D. Everything. Why do you? Th what do you think happened to all the dragons that we faced? They became resources. Yeah, no, like you, 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 you should have been very well, at, like, uh, prepared for for this outcome. You provided even us with things that we calculated the could, surface area we of could a dragon. kill with wanton abandon, and which had ample resources on them. Bones, skin, flesh, meat, weapons. Because you you can you can. Earthmover's gonna make a new water skin out of its bladder. Like you don't you don't understand <laughs> what you've done to you. I mean, the, the thing is, we we can we can uh, take the teeth, use them as arrowheads, and we have arrows now. Then we just need the bows. <laughs> I mean, I, have... I, I guess we'd also need feathers. Are there any birds nearby? Any birds? <laughs> Oh, I forgot to make a nature check on the mushrooms. Could I do that? Yes. Cool. Oh my god. 
I love combat. Uh, that's a 24 for a nature check. <laughs> I did 23. 23. Uh, no, you, nature you brought this is the world. I wonder what's going on in Drew's head right now. Okay, how can I punish them for this? So the, <laughs> so the mushrooms, you realize, oh great, now if I go through what I had already planned with the mushrooms, it's going to sound like retribution. <laughs> nope, oh, yeah, then it's riddled the corpse with like the whole bunch of spores and had taken over the bear's body and it's not going to be useful meat? Is that... Well, no, I mean, that's probably part of it. Like, this thing had a bad fungal infection, and you realize you breeds in this fungal infection. Those spores right. are living Here's inside of you. Thing. Oh, wait. So this wait, is going to turn okay. into a zombie world. Zombie no, 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 no. no have, okay. Have, have, no, no one's eaten any of the meat yet, right? Correct. Okay, fine. I cast purify food and drink. Yeah, nice. Oh, this is gone now. Um, <laughs> read the effect of that spell, please. <laughs> Okay. Oh my goodness. All non-magical food and drink within a five-foot radius sphere center a point of your choice within range is purified and rendered free of poison and disease. Okay. Poison. Okay, uh, read the second word and then the last three words again for me real quick. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ah, uh, no, 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 no. It says not okay, non magical and poison and disease. Okay, so, so th this is not. Oh, thing, so he's gonna look up a specific mushroom that doesn't apply to those. No, no, no. It, it specifies non magical food. Non magical food is what it specifies. Okay, and these bears are not magical unless you want retcon that. Okay, well, um. And then rendered free of poison and disease. Okay, I'm going to say that the bear's meat, to the best of your understanding, is now purified, but the mushrooms are still very much there. Cool, so the mushrooms aren't poison. Yeah, and they're edible. There's there's no ill effect of That's the it. mushroom, it's not a poison. Yeah, and you can, mushrooms are well. mostly edible. Okay, you so might not want I, to I, eat I, it, will, but... I will add this to the to the oh, topic wait, of wait, consideration. Wait, wait. Unless... Well, no, 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 no. I've, I've, no, no, I've no, got no. the this, candle. This no, I have, is... I have it. I have it. Um, wait. spores are the way of reproduction, which means it's going to be an airborne thing. Um, if there's none of that is going to be in the meat, none of the actual budding part of the mushroom. Well, budding's the wrong word, but none of the reproductive capable part of the mushroom is going to be on the outside. And unless they're really, we, really heat resistant, they're not going to continue reproducing once we cook this meat. So it's fine. We we ca we cannot necessarily eat the mushrooms because it specifies non magical food. So if these mushrooms are magical, they might still be. Um, poisonous. Okay. Also, what's the definition of the word food? Oh, yeah. Go ahead and cast purified uh, food and drink on me for a uh, real quick, just yeah. because cannibalism is uh, possible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to cast it on you. I'm not. Gonna, we're not going to start eating you. Well, see, that's that's always the reason to have a lizard folk uh, cleric in your party. Is because then they can cast purify food and drink on the party members. Oh my god! Yeah, l last I checked, drow aren't cannibals. Yeah. Wait. Oh my. God. Um. Well, actually, they, the the females might eat the males. That's just like. Well, yeah, I mean, well, then again, there is a planar gem gorge who eats planar gems, so technically they count as food. Um, I only say that because I know that like driders are a thing, so I don't know. That seems like something that might be true. I, actually, I, I I guess I need to ask. I need to ask the DM: Are drow cannibals? Not usually. Or, do, do, or, or will they eat human flesh? Are driders cannibals? It's within their capacity, but it's not something that they normally do. Are driders cannibals? I, you don't know. Okay. Your character would have no way of knowing. Yeah, my character also would have no way of knowing what a drider is. 
Easy Oho, though, might. This is actually what we're speaking for such a long. <laughs> this is where this is going. You're still um, here. Do I feel any ill effects of the spores? Not yet. Cool. Let's keep Good it going. Good to know. Oh my god. I mean, at, at, at this point... It's at a this Halloween point, I, I think session. That, yeah. So I, I think that at this point, <laughs> so, someone needs to stay behind to make sure that the DM doesn't mess with our... Our, okay, uh, guys, meats. if I agree that nothing will interfere with these bare corpses while you're in the dungeon, can you move on from this? I mean, I, I suppose. I suppose. I, I could be convinced of that, but I don't know about the other two. I, w I wanted to re-clarify. Geralt was our divine soul sorcerer. Yes. Ooh, okay, cool. So a lot of our restoration magic is not with us at the moment. Restoration? Oh. Oh. Yeah, like healing things. I don't know what spells. Oh. This is had why I have. asked if you guys had friends who would be willing to join. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Wait, so they could join in on this craziness? Sure. Not the bear thing, but <laughs> first, I swear, if you call up some random guy to be like, hey, you want to talk about bear pelts with my D&D &D group? I'm going to throw something at you. Um, yeah. I Because, like, we don't have anyone that even can cast Lesser Restoration at this point. Not that I know that, like, I don't know if he knew it or not, but we, we don't have anyone that even could right now. Okay. I'm ready to move further into the dungeon. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I guess I can go further into the dungeon yeah. now. Okay, so do you guys go back inside the dungeon, and you're in that uh, 25 foot by 25 foot room again. Uh, directly in front of you, there is a hallway that is blocked off by rocks. And then to your left, there seems to be one hallway. And then to your right, there's the narrow hallway that you went down before. Blocked are there any other doors down Andres, the hallway are you, that you just came from? Are you raising your hand or are you just visualizing? I, I was I was, uh, I was, was doing a, a this is a job for me pose. Um, although this also is like a pitch moment as well. We can clear the rocks. Oh. You can also go back to the bear room and check out that other door. Oh, I assumed that's where we were. I thought that's what the 25 foot room was. No, no, this is the. That room was bigger than 25. It's just the entryway. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm content to go back to the bear room because there was still more in that direction we hadn't finished. Okay. <laughs> So you guys go so, back to the bare room, for, minus one table. Yeah. Uh, for clarification. Yes. When when I use my when I use my grimoire for casting spells, does that take away spell slots or no? Uh, yes. Okay. Unless you have like a special thing where you can cast a spell once daily for free. Okay. Anyway, you guys make it back to. I'll check that. The bear game room, and now there's that door in the top left corner. What do you want to do? Okay. Do you, okay, what do you want to do? Mm, uh, let's... Okay, let me just try the layout of the room again. This is a... Um, this is a 40-foot by 30-foot room. There's three tables now throughout, uh, across it that no longer have cards or dice, and then in the top left corner there's a door, as well as the door that you came in through.
Billy. Nothing. Uh, let's. Have, uh, honestly, I. I start. Oh, my bad. I'm just waiting for the battle. Did Did you guys just message each other right now and be like, "Hey, let's say absolutely nothing" after chatting all the time about bears? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. How How How'd you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Who told you? <laughs> Who's the leak? Chris. It wasn't Bye. me. Okay, uh, let's 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 go through the other door in that room. Okay, so, finally, you guys interact with that door. It is locked. Ah, come it took on! An hour to All get right, to that. Let's go home. Let's go home. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 Yes, I like. What, actually, I'm a, I'm a mason, could, so I can could actually we do, do that, that. Actually, I'm a mason. We, I mean, I mean yes, we have that, but we also have uh, Andreas. If you wanted to, could also just yes, could also just use alchemy on the wall. Yes, it has been established that Earth Movers alchemy can be used to open up alternative doors and dungeons. Yeah, so we could do that as well. Do we want to, or do we want to? Do this the intended way and search for the key for this door. Um, or you could, uh, and, well, I don't think any of you know how to pick locks, so you could also just try to bust it down. I could try, I mean, I can try to. Wait, if... mm, all, something else we could try is we could use. This would be a very stupid way to use it, but we could use our um, uh, Hill Giant Surge to have a better chance of breaking down the door, because that does because that does max out your strength. But I feel like that'd be a waste. Okay. Just putting it out there as an option. It would, it would also tell us if there are any giants other than Earth Mover within the dungeon. Because I am assuming that this dungeon is less than a mile across. Yeah. Yeah, do, do any of you want to we... activate that? It, it takes a week to recharge, so I, I don't really think it's well, worth uh, using. That. Well, look at the um, look at the feet again. It's two separate features that you got. But it takes a week for it to recharge. Is it notes and records? Uh, it's under documents. Oh, it's under documents. Okay. <clears throat> oh, okay. I, okay, yeah, that is two different things. As an extra on your turn, you may detect their giants. Uh, if there are giants within a one mile radius, you don't know the exact type, or you do know their general location relative to you. Okay. Giant sense would tell us if there are any other giants. You know what? Sure. I'll I'll use giant sense. Okay. See if there are you, any giants. <clears throat> yes. So tapping into um, something that you didn't that you don't quite understand how you understand within your soul after after having absorbed a bit of that giant soul. You speak forth a um, short phrase in Giant that Earth Mover immediately recognizes as reveal yourself to me. And you begin to realize that, yes, there are um, a few giants underneath you. There's, there's something beneath us. Giants. Yes. So you realize that there are definitely going to be um, at least a few giants somewhere in this dungeon that you might have to look out for. Well, knowing that, we can prepare for it. Yeah. And now everyone knows there are giants here, so... Th there be giants in them, there are hills. There's giants in them hills. There's a snake in my boat. Okay. 
Okay, so what do you guys want to do about the locked door? Well, I could just try picking it the first time. I'm not good at it, but I could try at least once. I've never done it before. Actually, I've done it once before, but... And it went well, so... We could try uh, it. Do you have these tools? Huh? Do you have thieves tools? No. Okay, then. Can I use my mace tools to break the lock? Um... Yeah, if you guys want to try to break down this door, there's a few ways you can try that. I can't break the lock? Oh, wait, the lock, the... Oh. Right, okay. Does anybody have a fire spell? Oh, that'd be fun. Fire in the dungeon! I repeat, there's a fire in the dungeon! Um, but no, I do not. Damn. It, I wish... Unfortunately, it looks like poison spray is not acidic. Otherwise, I would have used it on the door to try and just slowly burn through the door. Because the thing is, poison spray is ju- is Poison spray is a cantrip. Yes. Which is just as strong as Toll the Dead after someone's taken damage. The hell? Um, yeah. Okay. I like that. That's I mean, Eldritch Blast. This poison spray also has a much more limited range. It does. <clears throat> okay. So what would you guys like to attempt on this door? Okay, so you have a hundred things to do with a bear, but... Well, that's because we're things It's because now. the bear is an open-ended question of, I can start doing things that I wasn't expected to do anything with. Here, different routes can be very easily planned for. A locked door is an intended element. A bear carcass is a consequential element that's not typically intended. Okay. So that's what the... So, okay, do, do we want to try... Because... Wait, with, with your alchemy, can you make a fire, a fire bigger and stronger? Um, I don't think so. Um, yeah. Both from the perspective of like out of character, I don't believe I have a circle that does anything like that. But also from the perspective of like what alchemy is, not really. Like, I, I, I can't think of any justification for that, considering fire is not a state of matter. It's so, what, what, where, where, are you, what, where are you pulling your inspiration for, <clears throat> for this character from? Full Metal Alchemist. It isn't, isn't, like, in Full Metal Alchemist, don't they sometimes use lighters to create a spark <clears throat> and then just use alchemy to make it into a giant flamethrower? Um, yeah, what was his name? Yeah, there is M- Colonel Mustang. That was it. I knew it was a colonel. I couldn't remember his name. Okay. So, yeah, that that is something that you could do. Th- theoretically, I mean. Yes, that was mostly a... Um, if, if, a but if, if, if you don't know this, the <clears throat> spell circle, then, I mean, it's... The, yeah, it's I, I, don't, I don't think I have a f- circle that... Do- I mean, manipulate element. I think fire or lightning is an element, one of those two. But lightning would be plasma, and fire is not matter. Yeah. Fire is it's not plastic. We're on fire. Um, yeah, so okay, yeah. Because um, otherwise, I was going to say, I have a tinderbox. No, you yeah. Could... I, fire is just like an element. I can do manipulate element. Okay. Okay. So if, if I were to use my, my tinderbox to... Wait, use my tinderbox to light a torch, then we could turn that torch into a flamethrower, basically, and burn down the door. Yes, and, well, do any of you have oil? That would definitely help here. Um, oil or um, um, I, oh, so I'll leave this question up to you. What's uh, the scope do. that I have we, made we, of? We, 
we we don't have oil in a liquid state, but we do have it in a solid state. Soap and fat. No, yeah. the bear. Yes, animal fat. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's why I was asking if what the soap was made of because we if we don't, we don't have to go back outside if we can just use my soap. But, um, let's that, see but, that. but then we're using. Uh, but are we going to use the soap? Yeah, probably not. But the fat will go rancid, and then you can't sell it. Depends this on how long true. we're going to be dying for. Oh wait, no, not sopa, soap. Uh, <laughs> sopa de baby. Yeah, it's definitely fat based. Cool. Uh, I'm just gonna. I, I, I'm just gonna run back to the bear real quick and take some of the fat and take it back to back down here with me. Okay. Yeah, so you guys are able to mash together like this soapy, fatty concoction. Yes. That Earth Mover is able to use as the base of the fuel for his flamethrower. Yes. To burn down the door, yes. Yes. This is all correct. Yeah, yeah, burning, yeah, setting fire to a um, door in an enclosed area. This won't mess with your oxygen supply. No, not Don't worry, you're still on the first floor. You guys want to do this on like the third or fourth floor? Yeah, yeah. Wait, is, th- does it? Does the dungeon go up? Well, actually, no. The dungeon goes down. So yeah, yeah doing all the first floors actually. Yes. Yeah. Unless there's like some burrowing giants that are coming for you. <laughs> that would be <Yeah>. horrible. <laughs> That'd be horrifying. But yeah, uh, let's, let's just, um... Giant mole people. Oh, no. Are they in teacher's earthbending? It's, yeah, be- badger bowls. <laughs> then it goes secret tunnel. No, no, not, now now I'm doing it too. Any, let's focus on the session. <laughs> and, yes, yeah. let's go anyway, with us, bro. So, okay. So now, now that we've established that that's what we're going to do, we're, we're just gonna take this soapy, fatty... Yule source. Yeah, in that case, like the um, torch. Let's see now. Uh, easy Oho, I guess you can make maybe like a nature check to like combine this concoction or uh, something else if your thing might be more applicable. Like if you're proficient in alchemy. Right. Just because you're well, assisting. Well, actually, yeah, yeah, you're assisting I'm, your explain, I, I'm, I'm more so wondering why I would need uh, nature though. Um, all I'm doing I is taking really think of anything else. I mean, do you, do you know something else that it could be? Definitely intelligence base feels like to make this um, mixture. Am I not just mashing two things together? Yeah, but don't you want to do it in a really cool way? Okay, fine. Make a strength check then if you want, or dexterity. Neither. Be good either. Aren't you a fine, fighter? N- nature. I'll, huh? You're a fighter. I'll, 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 I'll do a nature check. Okay. I'm just, I just don't understand why I need to do a check in the first place. But okay. Because depending on how good this is, will um, help boost Earth Mover's flamethrower. 16. Yeah, with a 16, yeah, you're able to, um, you know, ma- mash these together pretty well on the table. Be able to make like this nice oily concoction that you're able to give to Earth Mover, and I suppose you're ready to torch for him. Yep. Okay then, Earth Mover, you gonna make a fire bending check for the first time? I can what? Make a manipulate element check based on fire. Yeah, this, this will be my first fire check. Yep. Andreas is Andreas is started his zuku arc. I'm bad at it. That's the verdict. What'd you get? Uh, that's an eleven. Okay. Um. So here's the thing. You are able to uh, blast the door a bit, get it uh, starting to burn up a bit, but I'm also going to need constitution saving throws from you and Easy Hogo. Oh, it's a good thing I'm not standing super close. Or dice don't yeah, o- honestly, at, at this point, you might want to start wa- uh, getting out of the room. That's an eight. Uh, I s- do I see him struggle? I got an 18. Okay. So then, with an eighteen, and I, um, I feel like I need to have a higher throw anyway, so I'll take that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So then, with an eighteen, I guess, um, you take. You're only going to take um, three fire damage, but Earth is going to take six as this kind of explodes in his face. Oh. But the door has begun to uh, catch a bit of fire. 
Ooh, well, and that works. Work. And now you guys get the feeling that it would hurt, but you might get stand a better chance knocking down this door now. Okay. Do we you need we me could to do, do it. That. Or, or no, 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 no. Hear me out. Hear me out. Instead of trying to bust down the door now, let's wait for it to cool down some, so that it won't hurt us. Hey, if while, only while we wait on that, we can go and work on a different, different program. If only one of you guys had the magical ability to put out fire. Oh, no, no, but, but the thing is, I, if, if we put it out prematurely, then we won't get the maximum effect from it. Because the, the wood is still going to keep on burning. Yes. So if we put it out now, then we're going to stop however long it, we would have left it to burn. Which means that we'll have more structural integrity. This door will have more structural integrity, making it harder to kick out. Okay. So I'm saying we go to a different part of the dungeon and work on that. Okay. While we wait for the door to burn. Where do you want to go now? Uh, there's another hallway that was being blocked in that uh, first room you to make. Yes. So if you um, poke your heads out from the room that you're currently in, uh, there's a hallway that goes. Uh, from your perspective, yeah. So it goes left or right, and from your perspective, you've already been. You came from the right. So let's or, go the other way. Yeah, you came from the right. Yeah. So you want to continue down the narrow hallway or return to the entrance? Continue down the narrow hallway, I guess. Okay. Then. Uh, do I see anything? Special as I as I look around down this dark hallway. Uh, you know, it's a lot of cobwebs or anything like that. Okay, any sort of traps by any chance or no? Um, make a perception check. Okay, I also have 120 feet of dark vision, so. Yes. Oh boy. Perception, you said. Yes. How does a nine sound? Yeah, with a nine, yeah, you're leading the group down this, um, you know, 45 sh- foot stretch of hallway, and you know, you really can't be certain whether or not there are any traps. You begin to feel a little bit uneasy about it, and uh, then the hallway. Easy yoga. Yes, and then the um, hallway takes a 90 degree turn to the left. What? Like, oh wait, wait, oh, there's a corner. Yes. Oh yeah, the hallway is going to start moving. It's, this is, yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. Wait. What is this, Harry Potter? Wait, uh, the Harry Potter it? stairs? Yeah, yeah. No, it's no, like no, no, when no. you're on a yeah. It's like when you're at a train station and there's that uh spinny thing in the middle of the trains. I don't know. This. Th- have, have any of you watched Magnus Archives? No. Or listened to Magnus Archives? I guess I should say. No. No. Okay. Okay, anyway, so do you guys want to keep going down the hallway or backtrack from whence you came? Uh, uh, I'll leave this decision up to the guys, because I, I would have just punched on the door by now, but I don't want to get hurt, so. I send my raven to just explore. Okay, raven yeah, if you send fly. your raven down the end of the narrow hallway, that leads you about about 50 feet down, and it comes to a stone wall. This hallway just seems to dead end. That's weird. Yep. I have my raven just, like, peck at the wall. Um, yeah, by pecking at the wall, it doesn't seem to reveal anything. I relay this information to the guys. Yeah, in the meantime, my raven comes towards me. Okay. Guys, there's a dead end. And it's weird. And Easy Hogo can definitely see the dead end from where he's standing. Okay. Uh, is there any writing anywhere? I'll look around. Uh, do I have the real perception? Uh, do, you, do you want to approach the door, Easy Hogo? Yeah, I'll, I'll approach the door. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, wall. Or, yeah, the wall. Ah, the, the, there is a door somewhere then. Okay. Actually, I meant the window. 
you know how those in mountain windows work in mountain windows yeah, yeah, amazing yeah, yeah sorry you, you, you so that, that i'm still thinking about that door that you guys set on fire I'm not sure what the ramifications that are going to be we're gonna break down the, the yeah wall. i'm amazed that you guys actually moved on past that chamber so wait wait a minute so we we could have just put the meat in there to smoke from the smoke of the burning wood dang Aww. Anyway, you walk to the end of the hallway. Down. You know, you feel the stone around you. Perception. I'm going to roll and perception. You may, well, Easy Hogo is leading the um, march. And so you're able to make it to the end of the hallway. And you make it to the dead end. Okay. Uh, are there any stones that are diff that are, So is, is it a flat stone wall or is it like... Is it one flat piece of stone or is it... A bunch of stone bricks. <clears throat> uh, this seems to be a flat piece of stone. And make an investigation okay. check, Ash. Thank God. We're starting off with a 90, and that's where I had my mods. Uh, and you said invest? Yes. 22. Okay. Um, with a 22, you know, you're feeling around this stone trying to see what's up about it. And you begin to realize after you run your hands about it that there is a very slight piece of it that seems to slide in a bit. Okay. Yes. Uh, so I, I feel that it indents it then slightly. Yes. Okay. I'm going to try and figure out, figure out what the shape of it is then. Okay, so you're going to continue to square apply... triangle. How 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 big are we talking? Yeah, so you're going to continue to apply pressure to where it um, indented when you pressed it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you do that, you begin to feel the wall move a bit. Okay. Yes, and so if you keep uh, going like that, you realize that this thing it's basically beginning to um, rotate. And that on the opposite okay, side from where you were uh, pushing, there is a doorknob. A, a what come? So as you're uh, pushing into the wall across that uh, one area, you know, it begins to... Yeah, so if um, this is you pressing this, yeah, you're pressing it this way. Or, no, pressing it, yeah. Yeah. And then you realize that um, right here there's a doorknob. Okay. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, I'm, go uh, I'm going to ask Stitch to... Hey, Stitch, can, there's, a, there's a doorknob. Can you grab it? I, I and I, I, I point to where the doorknob is. I think I might be doing a poor job explaining this. The entire wall rotated like an opening. Oh, uh, okay. And as that do, opens... Do, do the others, do, are the others seeing this? The walls yes. moving, or is it... yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Well, I mean, how is Earth Sorry. overseeing? Fairy lights. <laughs> okay, yeah. If you cast a dancing light, it's a cantrip. Yeah, it's that's cantrip. fine. So you uh, all see these um, easy oho begin to rotate the um, wall. Oh, so, sorry, d dancing lights. Yeah, that's Same fine. Thing. And you see that the uh, that this hallway continues up a little bit and then turns to the left. You found a secret door. It's another left. Yes. Okay. How how far have we traveled so far? Um. Let's see. Now that was down. Eight, nine, ten. Um. After you turned, you went down about fifty feet. Then you found the secret door, and now the hallway continues down about another ten feet to the, and then turns to the left. Okay. You guys are going to keep on going. I'm, I'm just going to keep an eye out for any any signs of traps. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so then as you turn to the left, and then about another 15 feet, there's another there's another door. Wooden. Okay. Yep. I'm going to uh, investigate it for any traps. Okay, make a perception check. Dirty twenty. Yeah, with a um 
Yeah, with a, a 20, you actually um, realize that there is a bell on this uh, doorknob. Ah, well then, I'm glad I checked it for, tra- for some yeah. sort of trap. There's a bell on the there's a bell on the door. If we open it, I think it'll ring and notify who was inside. Is there a way I can grab the bell so that it doesn't ring? Um yeah, that would be a sleight of hand check, I guess. Seventeen plus uh four. Yeah, with 21. a twenty one total, you just very carefully and very deftly just um hold the bell and the clapper from the inside and just carefully remove it from the doorknob, I presume? Yeah. And now you have a bell. A little bell. You want to start ringing it? <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, I go outside and start that, ringing the bell! Well, <laughs> actually, that, that could be very useful for later. Yes. Just, just thinking about that, yeah, that... I don't know what circumstance it would be, but there could be a circumstance where we need a fo- uh, some sort of distraction, and that bell mm-hmm. could be useful. Uh, especially if I were to use uh, summon undead, and I could have my undead creature ring the bell mm-hmm. and just start walking away. Okay. Then. Okay. Now, okay. So you now have to remove the bell from the door. What do you want to do? Uh. See, can I see inside? I mean, I, I, I think we know what. Well, the the door presumably is still closed, correct? Yes. But is there any like under okay. under, like no. on the on bottom? Oh, like, is, is, is there a gap between the floor and the no, door? No, it's flush with the. Um, wow, that's some good. That's some good. Uh... Okay, fine. I guess there's like a small crack at the bottom, but yeah, the raven couldn't fit through there. I know, but can I look? Like, can you it's know? Dark. Like, it's dark. Not even with the raven. Um, actually, yeah, here's the thing. If you're putting yourself all the way down there at the bottom, it seems to be that there is one immediate room, then another door, and past that other door, there's light. I relay this information. Okay. Mm. Also, since my crow is a spectral, uh, raven is a spectral raven, can I meditate it so I can appear on the other side of the door? Um, oh. Possibly. Wait, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. I've, because I've it doesn't idea. cost me key, and you know, it's only a short rest. Not a short rest, it's a, a um, ritual. Uh, no, it has to be within five feet of you, so no. So the door is more than five feet thick? Well, no, like you could open up, like, you could do it in the small space in between those two doors, but you couldn't necessarily make it appear in the third room. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. I relay this information to the other guys. What do you think we should do? Mm, okay. So there's lights. So the the bell was so because there are lights that clearly tells me or that there is there's light coming from a second door inside the room. Yeah. That that tells me that there is a that there are people in there. And that bell was intended to ring in case anyone came in to alert them. So they would just be able to come and fight us. Yeah, it because... makes sense as to what it could be. Which means that they might have information on this dungeon and what's going on in here. Okay. You can so what we could try. Them. So we what we could do possibly is go in. And take out most of the most of the creatures, and then keep one for interrogation to learn more. 
Okay. Do you want charge in there? Charge! The point of charge? the bell. No. No, no, no. Because charging seems like a terrible idea. What I would rather do is... Oh. Oh, I've got an idea. What? Uh, when you're in an area of dimension. Da -da -da -da. I am thinking about using one with shadows. When you're in an area of light or darkness, of dim light or darkness, you can use your action to become invisible instead of move or take an action or a reaction. Which means now that we've disabled the bell, I can go in there, I can listen to what's going on, and then sneak back. Okay. Because I, 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 once I stop moving, I can turn myself invisible and just listen to what they're saying. What do you guys think? The sneaky approach. I can help with that because, like, I'm pretty sneaky as well. And what that, oh, and what that'll also do is it'll allow us to allow us to get an idea of how many, how many things we'd be fighting and what types of things we'd be fighting. Yeah, are they sapient? Are they or are are, are they sentient? Uh, are we fighting just a bunch of bleh? What what are we doing? Yeah, so let's try that. But how are we gonna open okay. the door quietly? What if it creaks? Ooh, I don't like that. We could just I mean, roll for stealth, right? Right, BM? Yes. yes. Or we could try that. Okay, so I'm do you want to make a stealth, stealth check so to open the that. first door? Yes. Right. Well, okay. are you gonna do it? Are you who, gonna roll who, it or who has the higher stealth? Uh, Grab the text. Yeah, what's, what's, what's your stealth? Plus four. You do it, because your, yours right. is better than mine. All right. How is a 17? Okay. Yeah, so with a 17, you're able to um, very carefully open up this door. And it doesn't creak. And you realize that, you know, immediately across from you, there is another door. But also to your left, there's a set of stairs leading downwards. Okay. Um, is the light coming from past the other door? Yes. Okay. In that case... Okay, here's what I'm thinking. Okay, so, okay. I, I can turn myself invisible. And then, then listen at the door. Do you want to, do you want to investigate down the stairs? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Okay. So if you're listening at the um, oh, uh, does does does, Earthmover, does Earthmover want to do anything during this, or or is Andreas just passed out right now? Okay. We're we're about to wrap up soon anyway. So you're gonna open okay. up that door? Uh, I'm not gonna open it. I'm just going to stand stand outside and listen at the door. Um, if you start to listen, you can actually begin to hear uh, some people speaking in a language you don't understand. Okay. How how many voices can I hear? Um, make a perception check. Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah, with the fifteen, you can tell that there's at least three people speaking, but it could be more. Okay. Uh, do I recognize? I, I'm assuming I don't recognize the language. Well, do I recognize what the language is? No. I, I know I can't understand what they're saying, but you don't recognize the language. Okay. Can you describe their voices for me then? Um. Like, is it guttural, shrieky? 
kind of just like a normal talking voice? What are we looking at? Yeah, like um, you 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 have trouble pinpointing it. It feels like they uh, change in inflection a lot. Chinese. I'm kidding. Wow. Is it true or not true? I don't know. I don't speak Chinese. I'm not going to say it because I don't speak Chinese. Yeah. I thought they had a bunch of like inflections. It's a total language. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so it I was seems thinking... like from what you were able to gather, it seems like they're changing tone and inflection a lot. Oh no. I'm gonna end up calling my teacher a rat. <laughs> what? That's that's it's not um... it's not Mr. Rapper. No, no, no. It's the difference between Lao Shi and Lao Shu. Okay. Or something like that. I don't know. I also don't speak any flavors of Chinese. Okay. Do you want to open the door? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Earthmore well, is opening the door. Okay. And is that where we're going to end the episode? Well, here's what. So here's what I'm going to say. So Earthmover, I guess, reaches past Easy Hogo, who's now invisible, maybe. And I'm and I'm, I'm going to I'm I'm going to re uh, reach out to stop him for a moment. Just yeah. before he opens the door. Mm. There are three people inside. At least. I don't know more than that. Remind me, are we, still, the language. are we still near the... Um, are, are we still anywhere near the thing with the the writing that said, like, reveal yourself? No, uh, Easy Hogo said that. That's basically the power phrase to activate the um, giant sensibility. I see. Okay. 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 I, I'll, I'll be so on. I, I know that there are giants other than you yes. within a mile of us, presumably within the dungeon. Okay. Yes. No guarantees um, about that. I'll I'll be on guard, but I'm still going to open. Okay. Okay. If you open the door. As, I, as long as you open the door, and you know there are people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if you walk, open the door, and walk in. You're actually agreed to a rather strange sight. There are these creatures. They almost appear bird-like. They have gray skin and these um, beak-like faces. They seem to be conversing with each other. As you look around the room, you notice that there's about five of them. They're wearing uh, different robes. Um, one of them's orange, um, one's green, and then three are black. And they just seem to be conversing among each other. And then they notice you. And one of them says in uh, common, he says, Hello there. Are you a traveler? Uh, are those different fragments seeming to be in, like, different... Uh, yes, different, different tones. voices? Yes, slightly different uh, sounds, yes. Okay. Um, cool. Out of character, I know who they are. In, in character, I don't. Mm -hmm. um, or at least, I don't think... Earthmover would have probably encountered them before. <laughs> Hello. What are, uh, what are you all doing here? Welcome to the Stronghold. We are a group of merchants who can sell you things or exchange currency with the local coin. Oh, wait, I so I hear weird stuff and I start coming back to read. Yes. Okay. Do I have any idea? Like, uh, I listened to the last few words and I'm a little confused. Yeah, do you just walk in and reveal yourself? No. Okay. I'm still stealth. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Do I roll? Stealth mode activate. Yes. So, are you traveling alone or do you have friends? Sounds like a Modron to me. Friends. Ah, where are your friends? <laughs> I have no friends. <laughs> what are friends? They're yet uh, earlier in the in the passage. Ah, very well. Is this your first time visiting Ryford's stronghold? Yes. Ah. Well, you should know. Denizens here do not take gold coins. What do they take? 
And the uh, man who's been doing most of the talking, the one in the orange robe, he um, <coughs> opens up a box on a table and he takes out this uh, triangle for you to look at. It is... Is it made of bone? Um, you cannot tell what it's made out of, but it's painted green. Okay. Well, yes. also, I, I wouldn't know because I'm, I'm not in the room. I'm, I'm still stealth mode as well. Yes, we have three varieties of this triangle. The Can green, I... the blue, and the red. Can I presume that this room is actually illuminated, given that they're here? Yes, this room is... Uh, yeah, we, we already established there's light coming down. Gotcha, there, so gotcha. Yes. yes, and we would be glad to exchange currency, for we are a friendly group of Kenku merchants. There, we, there it is. There it is. Thank you. Kenku? And is that Do what I you have... guys for the session? Sure. Yeah. Okay, then. Do I even know what Kenku is? They're no. just a bird people. Yep. Okay. And so with Earthmover being the head of this diplomatic mission, is where we're going to call it after you guys spent an hour and a half on bears. As well, we, bears are I, important. Yeah. Until this next time, crazy. I've been your host and Dungeon Master Drew being joined by Earthmover and Fetch. Yeah. Oh, you know what this is? I told myself to come up with a bunch of bear puns, so this is cosmic punishment for me not doing my homework. No, it's cosmic punishment for having that thought. <laughs> okay. Till next time. Until next time. Bye. Adios.